Hi, today we'll see how to make objects fade out and fade in. I'll be using the 2.81 version of Blender. We're going to see a whole object disappear and reappear, and part of an object. Fine, let's start by deleting the default cube. X, delete. And save the file right away, Control S, in any folder you like. You can give it a name like fade.bland, this will do. And now let's add a UV sphere. So Shift A, UV sphere, and duplicate it twice, each time moving duplicate three units to the right along the X axis. So Shift D to duplicate, and now G to grab X along the X axis three. Ender. You can orbit like that to see it better. And duplicate this one again. Shift D, G, X, 3. Ender. Fine, now we have three spheres. The first sphere will fade out and in completely. As far as the second sphere is concerned, only the upper half will fade out and in. In the third sphere, only some random faces will fade out and in. So, first let's go to the World tab and set the world color to white. Okay, but in order to see this, we have to go to Rendered View, Rendered Shading. Yeah. Now select the first sphere and add a material to it. So let's go to Materials add, and let's rename it Fade. Okay. Now, change the material to Mix Shader. So, Mix Shader. And now, set the first shader to Transparent. And the second shader to diffuse. Now set the color of the diffuse material to red, something like hex E72225, for example. Fine. Now select the second sphere, add a material to it as well, and rename it red. This should be a diffuse material. And its color should be the same shade of red as the one of the fade material of the first sphere. So, go to color, click on this tool, click on this object, and this will copy the color into this slot. Now, select the third sphere and add the red material to it from the drop down list over here. Now select the first sphere again. Under settings, set blend mode to alpha blend. Now you can play with the factor to balance the amount of the two shaders, transparent and diffuse. The closer the value of the factor is to zero, the more the transparent shader dominates. The closer it's to 1, the more the diffuse shader does. Now, for now, let's set it to 0.5. Okay, now select the middle sphere and go to Edit Mode, Wireframe Shading over here, and let's go to Front View, one on your numpad. Now go to Face Select mode here and select the upper half of the sphere only. Now here in Materials, click on the plus sign to add a new material slot and select the Fade material from the drop-down menu 
as the second material. And click the Assign button here to assign the material to the selected half of the sphere. Now we can go back to Object Mode and Render Shading. And now we can play with the factor again. So as you can see, it changes. Fade, Diffuse. Fade, Diffuse. Fine. Okay, now select the third sphere and go to edit mode, wireframe shading, face select mode, which is already selected, and now let's deselect all, go to select, select random. By default, this will select 50% of the faces, but let's say we only need 30% of the faces to be selected. You can easily change it in the operator panel over here. Just type in 30. As you can see, now only 30% of the faces are selected. Now, hit the plus sign button over here to add a new material slot, like before. And again, select the fade material from the drop-down menu as the second material. And again, click the Assign button to assign the fade material to the selected faces. Go to Object Mode, Rendered View, Rendered Shading. And now we can play with the factor again. Okay, and now we want to animate the fade effect. The parts with the fade material will be fully visible at the beginning, then they will fade out and soon after that fade in again. Go to frame 1, if you're not there, you can just hit this button over here. Drag the factor value all the way up to 1 and insert a keyframe by hovering over the factor field and hitting I. The color changes, which means a keyframe has been inserted. You can see it over here. Now go to frame 125 over here. Now set the factor to zero all the way down and insert another keyframe, I. Now we have two keyframes. Now select the first keyframe in the timeline. Okay. Make sure only this keyframe is selected, which you can tell by its color. Selected keyframes are yellow and deselected ones are white. Now duplicate the first keyframe, so Shift plus D, and drag it all the way up to frame 250. like so. Now go to frame 1 and play the animation. You're now ready to render the animation. First some settings. In the Output Properties, over here, select an output folder where your animation will be saved. You can do it here. Okay. Now change the file format to FFmpeg video and under Encoding, change container to MPEG4. Now press 0 on your numpad to go to camera view. Press N to open the properties panel on the right and select the view tab. Check lock camera to view. 
Now adjust the camera view by orbiting in the 3D view editor. Okay. And when you are done, uncheck the camera to view. And you can hit N to hide this panel if you want to. Now make a test render at one of the frames near the middle of the timeline. So somewhere here. Render. Render image. Okay. So this looks fine. Save the file, Control S, and then render the animation. So go to Render, Render Animation, and this will take a while. You can see the progress in the upper left corner. Now I pause the video, and I'll come back when the animation is done. And now here is the final animation. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, you're welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.